أهلا بكم مجددا الآن نحن في جلسة تحت عنوان رؤية متكاملة لتوظيف الشباب في الخليج العربي سيقدم هذه الورقة على عجالة وفي ربع ساعة تقريبا السيد جيرارد جالاجر وهو قائد الاستشاريين في منطقة الشرق الأوسط وشمال إفريقيا وأيضا في باكستان وأفغانستان دعوني أقدم السيد جالاجر على عجالة السيد جالاجر هو أيضا الشريك المسؤول عن خدمات الاستشارات لمنطقة الشرق الأوسط وشمال إفريقيا وأفغانستان وباكستان هو مهندس معماري في الأساس وله 22 عاماً في الخبرة في مجالات مختلفة ابتداء من قطاع التعمير إلى قطاع الطاقة وإدارة الأصول هو من خلال عمله في هذه المنطقة يشرف على أكثر من 900 موظف في 17 دولة رحبوا معي بسيد جيرارد جارك Thank you, Sukran. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, let me thank the Jeddah Commerce for the opportunity to present today some new research that EY has carried out. I'm very privileged in the role that I do, and I would like to speak to you today as a businessman, a businessman that has a significant problem. Let me tell you about my problem. My problem is I am the leader of the fastest growing consulting business in the region by some distance. My other problem is I have the full and continual support of my global firm to invest in MENA to make sure we have the best talent in the region. So you may ask, what is your problem? My problem is this. EY has been in the region for over 90 years. We understand what it is to be a sustainable business. We are going to recruit many thousands of people in our business by 2020 as we set about delivering our strategy. And my problem is very straightforward. I want the majority of those people that we employ at EY across our 17 countries to come from GCC youth. That is my problem, ladies and gentlemen. So to deal with this problem, what we have undertaken to do is to understand a different perspective. I am challenging our business to understand why cannot we attract the volume of GCC nationals, young GC nationals, in our business? I want to understand why. To understand why, we have to speak to the GCC youth. And that's what we did. And it gives me great pleasure today, for the first time, to share with you the voice of young GCC nationals when it comes to employment. So let's begin. There are three parts to my presentation. The first part is I would like to provide you with a framework for sustainable economic growth, which is wholly designed on the GCC environment. Then I would like to share with you the early results of the survey from GCC nationals. And finally, I want to challenge us all to see what we are going to do differently to make sure we respond to that. So let's get started. In front of you is the EY framework for sustainable economic growth. It has two components. The first component at the top of the framework are the things that you need to create jobs. Those are business climate reform, we need government and institutions to make it easy for businesses to do business in this region. We've already had some sessions on that uh, so far. We also need to create jobs by investing in sustainable infrastructure. 
roads, rail, one part of it. We also need social infrastructure. We need ICT infrastructure. We need that to allow us to do business. The two other things that I want to share with you that we need, particularly in the GCC, is we need to make sure that the investment and the capital is responsive to what private sector businesses need. And the final one, which we'll come back to at the end, and I was so pleased and proud to hear the discussion earlier about entrepreneurship. That is the one box that will move the dial on job creation for your young people. I'll come back to that. The bottom part of it, essentially, is the eight things that our young people want to get sustainable jobs to come into the market. These two things together is what we need to be thinking about when we're talking about sustainable growth. It is of no coincidence that the four boxes across the top around demand generation are the themes for the GF conference. In our research, I'm not going to cover them all. I'm going to pick a few off, a few which is really important to your young people here in the GCC. By way of example, young people here, there are some industries that they really want to work in, and there are some industries that, frankly, they do not. We also have to help our young people much earlier in their education cycle understand potential options for their careers. That's just a few. We surveyed a thousand people in the GCC across the six countries. We split that between male and female. And we also spoke to people in public and private institutions with regards to education to make sure we have the full picture. The results are stark. So let's begin with sharing with you some of the results, and I'll come back at the end to try and draw some themes. So the first question we asked was, could you tell me how important it is for you to find a job? The second question we asked is, could you tell me what is your level of confidence in finding a job? If you look across the results for the first question, there's clearly divergence. Some countries, as you can see there, the students feel it's very, very important that they find a job after education. There's other places that feel it's less important at the current stage in their career to find a job. Couple that with, if you're in education, do you feel when you finish that you're confident you'll get a job? And that is a really worrying figure up there, that in Oman, there's such a sh small percentage of our students and our people feel that they have a job. And I got very confused with this, because job creation, I think, is not the major issue here in the GCC. What we found when we started to unpick this, it's not the job issue, it's the type of job that your young people want to do. So there's plenty of jobs there for them, but there's a growing demand and voice from your young people that not every job is a good job. This is point number one, which we need to really understand. Not every job is a good job. Let me continue and talk about how young people find work. And this is how young people feel. I'll comment in a second as a business leader how I feel. Some people would call this the WASTA slide. What this slide shows you is that young people will mostly rely on their networks, their friends, their families, their communities to find work. That is not unusual. The worrying thing here is how much reliance that young people put on their school and education and universities to find them and guide them into, uh, into jobs. Only 7% of them turn to their education establishments for guidance and support in finding a job. There lies a dramatic problem that people come out of education and they, they wait for their network to happen. As a business leader, I disagree with this. 
uh, operating across so many countries, we certainly have access to wide networks, but young people coming into our business need to find other ways to enter our business as we globalize, other than just the people that they know who may work for EY. But that's how our young people are feeling. So already I'm feeling a disconnect about that. Next one is okay, if not every job's a good job, which industries would you like to work in? And I hear very often that young GCC nationals mostly want to work in government. That's what I hear a lot. Is it true? Nearly. In all countries other than the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, more than 50% of young people do want to work in government. In the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, around 55% of young people want to work in the private sector. And the figure goes up even higher in Bahrain. So again, as an employer who has the ability to look across the entire GCC for talent, it becomes very quick in my world to look where I should be looking to pick up young, enthusiastic, bright, energetic people to work in our business. There lies another challenge as you look across the GCC. Let me continue to say, if we offer you a job, what's the most important factor for you when looking for a job? Not surprising, pay, rations, benefits is number one. But interestingly, as you go further down, and this is where I think the GCC nationals are slightly different, I have a great privilege to be part of a business which has 150,000 people globally. The average age of our people are 28 across the EY global business. So we really do understand what Generation X and Generation Y want. But as I look at the research there, it is really important that the people in this room validate our young people as they make career choices. They're looking for sponsorship and support from their families, their friends, their networks, as they seek to make a choice. The second final piece of research I'd like to share with you is how are we enabling young people to get ready for the working world? This question asked, how confident are you that the education system that you're currently involved in will get you ready for the business world, the private sector business world. And it's fair to say that most of our students are not feeling confident that they will have the right education and skills to allow them to access the private sector growth market and make a difference globally. We need to think about this very, very seriously. We're spending a lot of energy educating our people. They're not feeling it's the right thing. As business leaders are saying it's not the right thing, we need to fundamentally understand what we need from the private sector. The final thing I would like to share with you, and as you know, EY is very, very uh, involved in entrepreneurship. It's one of the global values that we will help build, grow, and sustain young businesses and make them big businesses. So we know what it takes to make an entrepreneur really successful. This question, if there's ever a wake-up call for our people in this room, this is a slide. I do believe that we can create many more jobs by energizing the entrepreneurs in the GCC. So when I ask them, do they feel inclined, enabled, and supported to start their own business? Only one country feels to me in any way supportive and that's Bahrain, with 70% of the people saying that they believe, they feel inclined and supported to be entrepreneurs. We published research, which is on the right-hand side, called the Power of Three, where we looked at the G20, uh, including Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and we rated the G20 on their ability to create an ecosystem for entrepreneurs to succeed. Unfortunately, the reading for Saudi Arabia was not good. We have a lot of opportunity to improve. That research is at the back, and there's some really, really practical steps here. And we're hearing about it here, but, but my ask is we need to allow the entrepreneurial spirit 
to, to grow and to, and to be energized in the young people. So let me conclude by saying two things, because it's a very short slot and it's an introductory slot. What's going to happen from here? What's going to happen from here is what people really want to know is how do we resolve this issue in their individual country. I agree, some of the issues that are in here are very country specific and we need to spend time understanding the response to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each country and we're going to go to another level below it and start to understand practically what we can do to make a difference. The research report, which has been released today here at Jeff, is available outside our stand with appropriate supporting documentation uh, and uh, opportunity to speak to some of our people. The full report, country by country, will come online over the next few weeks. Uh, will be available on our website at ey.com. And here's my commitment to you. My commitment to you goes along these lines. EY, as the oldest professional services firm in the region, by some way has an obligation, I think, to make sure we contribute to this agenda. We have the entire firm's resources at our disposal, and we're going to continue on this journey to make sure that we, as an organization of the scale that we are, are going to make a difference. But here's some things I would like you to, to think about. If you have any spare capital, be it money or emotion or energy, please, please, please put it towards creating an environment in which your young people can succeed and be entrepreneurial. This is not money, this is support, this is validation. Please, anything spare, it should go there. We also need to create a national campaign across the GCC where we, we give people the opportunity to feel good about working in the private sector. That's something that we need to focus on. We need to think with educationalists, government and business need to come together to make sure we're designing the universities and high schools for the future which are fit for purpose. Because right now, our young people don't feel that it's doing it. Business doesn't feel like we're doing it. We really need to sort that one as well. As an organization, we've taken on many young apprentices and school leavers. Around the world, we've taken on nearly 22,000 young people into our business, many of which are here in the MENA region. We're going to continue to do that because as the previous panel says, it's when you get to spend time with different people, that energy and that vision of what you want to be in the future is going to come through. The last speaker said 5%. I would encourage you all to think about what you can do to allow people to enter your organizations and have an experience which will shape them for the future. Finally, and this is a call to schools and universities and decision makers in those environments, please, please, please do not allow our young people to go through school and university without having a conversation about what they're going to do afterwards. We need to bring that process right back to the beginning of the journey. So let me close by saying uh, we are very, very uh, committed to this journey as an organization. I really hope that this is just the start of something that, that could be important for you. The voice of your young people is that they want some help, they want some inspiration, and they feel that they can really make a difference. And if we are going to compete on this global scale, we really need our young people to feel empowered and to grow our businesses. So as a business leader with a problem, I feel I may have shared my problem a little bit today, and I have many more friends to help me solve my problem. And I thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Shukran jazeelan Sayyid Gerald Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher, if you can stay in the boat, in the piece. Seed uh, Mazen uh, Batarji, Nayab Rais Majlis Idarat al Urfa Tijariya wa Sinaya Bijidda, Raja Minka Saud Lin Ajil, 
تكريم السيد جيراب جلاجر قائد الاستشارات في منطقة الشرق الأوسط وشمال إفريقيا في أرنس آن يونغ وأيضا باكستان وأفغانستان شكرا مستر جلاجر أتمنى فعلا الاستماع إلى النصائح التي قالها سيد جيراب لأنها بالفعل قد تمكن الشباب في منطقة الخليج العربي وفي المملكة تحديدا من الانضمام أكثر إلى سوق العمل وإلا من سيقود المجتمع والاقتصاد السعودي إلى المستقبل إن لم يمكن الشباب وتتاح لهم الفرصة